Hi, Hal here. Today we're going to talk about tall ships and we're going to talk about ships under full sail. Remember when I described to you the other day about sailing and how it was really important for global, the global economy of the, uh, you know, a few hundred years ago? Um, sailing was very, very important because that's the way people got around the earth and to trade with one another. Well, um, there's a wonderful book called Two Years Before the Mast, and I'm going to read from it today. And I'm also going to show you a little piece of Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, and it's starring Russell Crowe and James Darcy. Here we have Russell Crowe on the right and James Darcy on the left. Russell Crowe is the captain of the ship Surprise. James Darcy is the first mate. And what they're looking at is another ship coming up on them, a French ship, and they are gaining fast. Here, I'll roll it. And what you see here is right here. See those sails coming out? On the left-hand side, those sails extending out beyond the main working sails and on the right-hand side, those are the stun sails. Now, the description that I'm going to read from two years before the mast has to do with a ship under full sail with all of her stun sails out. Page 317 at the bottom, it says, Notwithstanding all that has been said about the beauty of a ship under full sail, there are very few who have ever seen a ship literally under all her sail. A ship coming in or going out of port with her ordinary sails, and perhaps two or three stun sails, is commonly said to be under full sail. But a ship never has all her sail upon her, except when she has a light, steady breeze, very nearly, but not quite, dead aft, and so regular that it can be trusted, and is likely to last for some time. Then with all her sails, light and heavy, and stun sails on each side, alow and aloft, she is the most glorious moving object in the world. Such a sight, very few, even some who have been at sea a good deal have ever beheld. For from the deck of your own vessel you cannot see her as you would a separate object. One night, while we were in these tropics, I went out to the end of the flying jib boom upon some duty, and having finished it, turned round and lay over the boom for a long time, admiring the beauty of the sight before me. Being so far out from the deck, I could look at the ship as at a separate vessel. And there rose up from the water, supported only by the small black hull, a pyramid of canvas, spreading out far beyond the hull, and towering up almost as it seemed in the indistinct night air to the clouds. The sea was as still as an inland lake. The light trade wind was gently and steadily breathing from astern. The dark blue sky was studded with the tropical stars. There was no sound but the rippling of the water under the stem. And the sails were spread out wide and high. The two lower stun sails stretching on each side far beyond the deck. The top mast stun sails like wings to the topsails the top gallant stun sails spreading fearlessly out above them. Still higher, the two royal stun sails, looking like two kites flying from the same string. And highest of all, the little sky sail, the apex of the pyramid, seeming actually to touch the stars and to be out of reach of human hands. So quiet, too, was the sea, and so steady the breeze, that if these sails had been sculptured marble, they could not have been more motionless. Not a ripple upon the surface of the canvas, not even a quivering of the extreme edges of the sail, so perfectly were they distended by the breeze. I was so lost in the sight that I forgot the presence of the man who came out with me until he said, for he too, a rough old man of war's man as he was, had been gazing at the show, half to himself, still looking at the marble sails. How quietly they do their work. Well, I don't know if I read that very well. 
<laughs> but I love that description of this ship sailing along in the night, softly, quietly, with the breeze from the back of the of the ship, from the stern, they say, and all the, the sails spread out like sculpted marble, like not even moving, and the whole ship moving through the water and the ripple under the under the hull. One thing that I really love to do in the summertime is to go out on an inland lake here near St. George called Sand Hollow Reservoir and go for a sail, go for a moonlight sail. In the evening, after the sun goes down and the wind starts coming off the sand dunes at about 10 miles an hour, just really steady, just like this. You set your sails in your boat and you sail east along the lake. And when you get done sailing east for a couple of miles and you sail west. And after the sun goes down, if you do it just right, the day before or the day of the full moon, the moon will come up just after sundown and it'll sparkle across the water and you'll see the ripple on the lake of the moon shining on the, on the water and it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And you're out there with no motor and no one else is out there except maybe a couple of other sailboats from our club. And it is so beautiful. It's, it's indescribable. I've been in San Diego Bay on a boat during full moon and it's absolutely not the same because you have all those lights from the city coming up but out there on Sand Hollow Reservoir the light is just minimal there is a city or a town called Hurricane and it's probably five or six miles away but it's small enough to where the light doesn't even bother us at all and so you don't get that night light from the, from the city. And you're just out there and it gets darker and darker. We do have a couple of lights on our boat on the front and on the back so that if there are other boats out there, they can see us. But it's so quiet and it's so beautiful. So if you want something to do, if you want an experience of a lifetime that not many people get, get in touch with me and I'll take you out. All right, that's all I have today. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Hal signing off. Bye-bye.